we see today is connecting our defense and, uh, establishment to a secure to a security out control network. We're, we're hooking things up to the internet, we're hooking things up in intranets of various sorts, and then hooking them up to the internet, all in the guise of trying to save money. The DOD and the other agencies have stated over and over again that they want to use commercial networks and uh, even point out the dangers of doing so. It doesn't seem to make any difference. Uh, all of you, I'm sure, are aware that on the internet, every month you can see that there's been some three to five fairly major flaws continue to be found in the networks and or the uh, major applications running on them. And in spite of all this, people still want to go ahead and use it. Uh, cost is a, an important consideration, but sometimes we think, I think that the uh, people who are doing it have lost some sight of what, what, what is important. About eight to ten years ago, in my opinion, we, we, we got off track. We, up to that time, we had been uh, developing a computer security program that had been designed on the basis of uh, sound principles. Uh, some mathematics that actually worked in this area, uh, a design of what uh, one needs to provide in the way of protection based on a set of labels representing the classification and sensitivity of data. And uh, there were actually systems being designed and developed that uh, uh, worked under these premises. Uh, as I say, about eight to ten years ago, we got off that track, and all of a sudden, from security uh, principles, we went into something called risk management. We managed risk. Uh, we didn't avoid or defeat security problems. Security became relativistic. There were incommensurable trade-offs that were supposed to be able to to be used in lieu of the sound technical foundation that we had, the trade-offs were, well, we can do more audit. Uh, so what? Uh, it only tells you how badly you're going to have. It doesn't preserve your secret. Or maybe we can do intrusion detection, which is another popular uh, theme these days. We'll spend a lot of money on detecting intruders. I keep saying, why don't we spend some money on preventing the intruders? Well, that's hard. But intrusion detection is easy, and it's also self uh, the one major activity that took place was the National Security Agency got into the act again and said cryptography is the answer for this question. And we had the MISI program visited upon the world. Now, there's nothing wrong with what MISI was attempting to do, or in fact, there's nothing really wrong with what NSA was attempting to do. But the, uh, the, the single mindedness of uh, the approach and their inability to consider that there may be options that they should be undertaking to um, assure that they have something to deliver to their customers were never taken into consideration. Uh, as you will hear later on today, uh, some of their, some of their uh, ambitions aren't going to be realized. And they were going to be what was the result of all of this activity eight or ten years ago? Well, one is that we, we lost the capability that we had. We had a capability to do this, but with the fact that the government was now in the security game in a big way, going around telling the customers of all the people they had previously told to build trusted systems in one form or another that don't bother, we're going to solve your problems, dried up the market for those people. Those people now suddenly find themselves with products that have developed at fairly great expense. And they, and some of, this, some of the companies putting lots of money into this sort of thing. And suddenly there's no place to sell it. Well, what happens is that the people who are working on those projects are diverted to put on other things that are productive for the, for the companies. And they have to produce revenue. The products go into disuse. There's nobody around who remembers how to, how to use them, how to build them, how to, how to do anything about them. And, uh, of course, you've got a, a government that says we're not going to, we're not going to uh, encourage your use of that because our, our neat solution, which is yet to be realized, is going to solve all these problems. We put our heads in our sand, in the sand. We, we did dissipate the research. The players who were, who were active in the game got out of it. They're no longer doing computer security as such. They're doing other kinds of things. Um, one of the calls that I know here in the audience is, uh, is, is now doing communication stuff. He's doing computer security. Hasn't been doing that. So, and it's, it is not atypical. There's lots of people that have just gotten out of the business because they want to eat. Uh, so they might think, but if that's what they want to do, that's OK. Um, there's been a drifting, the lack of focus. And, and this drifting takes, it takes the, uh, the uh, 
form of uh, this, this, this focus on the appearance of security. As I said before, we do things like audit systems and detection, fancier uh, identification, authentication, and people say, gee, what, what we need to do is we need to have retinal, uh, retinal readers. That, that's the answer. It has nothing to do with it. I mean, the fact that we have them doesn't help us if we don't have the foundation for them, or we don't have the foundation for them. These are all good and essential in terms of both research and development, but if we don't have the foundation, they don't really make, it, make any difference at all. Uh, I didn't say at the beginning, but I will tell you now. I mean, we, we still have a ways to go. If you want to interrupt, holler at me or something, get my attention, and I will uh, take questions as we go along, and we can take them at the end, whichever you prefer. Um, sometime in the past summer, something happened. I don't know what it was, whether it was the, uh, the appearance of the comet, whether it was that sort of thing, or whether it was a uh, different thing. But all of a sudden, the DOD plus the two major defense agencies, the uh, major defense agencies, and, and, and the National Security Agency is one, and the other one is an unnamed agency across the river from that, uh, independently arrived at the conclusion that they all need multi level systems, networks, and computers to meet their mission obligations. And, and I don't know what happened. I truly don't. And I've been poking around with people I work with and, and people I know who work with the others. And I said, you know, what was the epiphany? Why all of a sudden, after nine years of saying we're going to man manage risk, we're, we're going to use COTS, we don't care about all of a sudden, all of a sudden we're going to say the same thing. Uh, I guess we should be overjoyed. Uh, we should be, but unfortunately we can't be. And we'll talk about why. Uh, they, they, I still don't know what happened. I mean, maybe nothing happened. Maybe it's uh, people got a sudden dose of common sense all at once, but I don't think so. Uh, in spite of what the people will tell you, there really are real secrets to be kept, and I think that's one of the one of the things that may have come through. For years, we've been saying, well, it's not really important. We don't care. It's clear. We can, we, we need to know it's not terribly important. I think all of a sudden, dawns on people that really is there are things that have to be. Clearly, in the area of military operations, offensive are offensive and defensive capabilities vis a vis any enemies we may have in the world. Of course, we don't have any enemies in the world, but if we add some, that, that those are secrets we want to take, and all the intelligence sources and methods. Those are all the things that are important. There may be other things that I didn't, I didn't have time to think about, but those at least would keep us going. Uh, does anywhere, anytime, anything with any one goal? There was a statement by one of the senior officers at CIA. Uh, she said that, they, that the whole intelligence business has got to change the way it does business. And what they want to be able to do is, for their analysts, uh, be able to allow them to connect an analyst system with anywhere, anybody, anywhere, anytime, about anything. And they don't want to. They don't want to have to have an array of terminals on their desk because this one's good for top secret, and this one's good for secret with the rest of the community, and this one is good for the uh, internet, and this one's for the cypherpunk uh, access that they need. They want to be able to do this in one terminal, and they want to be able to integrate data from all over the world in all different forms, not just the secret collections and that sort of business, but the whole nine yards. Uh, if you look at some of the things that the analysts do in the CIA, for instance, a lot of the economic analysis, they use UN data. They want to be able to connect to UN databases. Or they may want to connect to a database that exists in France or in the Soviet Union or, or any place in the world in order for them to produce the projections and, and the study that they, they're tasked to produce. They don't want to have to go through these hoops of having to find the terminal for the day and then uh, hide the fact that they're talking to these people. They want to be able to just do it in a fairly straight way. They also want to make certain that they're doing it not to lose the classified, maybe highly sensitive data that they also have in their systems that they've accumulated from the collection system. So they want to be able to, they want to, be able to essentially make connections sensibly at a, at a level that is appropriate to the material or to the, the, the source that they're dealing with, and at the same time not have any backflow, if you will, from portions of the data that they're dealing with. That's what it's all about. That's where the, that's where the rubber hits the road in this problem. That and the fact that they do not want to have four or five terminals. They want to have a single terminal. Terminals are expensive. You go to some of these places and you look at a person's desk and there's, there's a, literally an array of them. four of them. Why? Well, we, we use this one to talk to the military. What do you mean you talk to the military? And well, we don't trust them. Even though they're all clear to us and, uh, uh, as we are, we, we, we can't 
let them hook into our system. So we have a separate terminal. We have another one to deal with the, with the uh, other agencies of the, of the uh, intelligence community. What does that mean? Well, uh, you know those guys at the IA and NSA, you know, we, can't, we can't trust them. I mean, they're the other guys. Well, sometimes I think that they probably get along better with the former Soviet Union than they would with our own, with our own troops. But anyway, it is, it is what, what they want to do. So the anything, anytime thing is a statement of a goal that they want to be able to do this stuff. They don't, want to, they don't expect it to happen next week. And I recognize that you know, there's a lot, a lot of history to overcome. There's a lot of cultural attitudes to overcome as well. But they want the technical capability of doing this. Whether they actually do it in any specific instance is, is not our concern. I mean, our concern is, given the capability, there are enough instances of real problems that require the capability. Then, then it's a management call as to how they import the capability. Uh, for instance, in the military, you're doing an awful lot of things now with, with other countries. You, you, you're forming task groups of one form or another. Three or four nations are represented, uh, whether, it's a, whether it's a task, whether it's a naval task group, whether it's at sea, whether it's an army activity in, uh, in uh, Bosnia or, or in, the, in the Middle East or wherever. You're working with other people all the time. What you want to be able to do is set up uh, an enclave, but you talk to all those people, keep nas our national secrets, which are part of this real uh, secret from our associates, without necessarily having to go through a whole separate communication subsystem, a whole separate computer subsystem just to do this. So I can do it out of the same boxes that we do everything else. For us, let the other guy take care of himself, but we want to just make certain that we're not, we're not penalized and that we are not spending extra money having all these extra machines. Uh, anyway, that's the origin of this, and, as, and I've said several places, I really think that as a, a statement of goal, suitably generalized, it doesn't have to, it, you can actually use that as a reasonable goal, and that's really what we ought to be working to in a lot of our computer security and other kinds of activities. Computer security especially. Okay, we said this before, we'll say it again, why is it in here twice? I guess maybe because I think it's important to say it twice. Uh, these are, this, is, this again then is the conclusion. Some of the other independent studies that say we need MLS, we need this solution, have come to. I, I happen to think it's right. I would have probably invented it myself if it hadn't been already stated by people fully qualified much better than I. But this is indeed a statement of what they want to be able to do. All right, why aren't we getting there? Why aren't we having these things? Well, first off, Believe it or not, there's a general lack of background on what multi-level security is about. And you'd say, how's that possible? And we spent, take, take a number you like, $50 million is probably about right over the past 25 years on multi-level security in various ways, and maybe even more than that. And there should be, you know, everybody should be awash in multi-level security understanding. People should know what it means, what you can do with it, uh, how you can use it, where you can get it, and all that sort of thing. It's not true. I could take you to places and you walk you down a hall and say, you know, button anybody you want and say, tell me about MLS, and they'll look at you blankly. They don't understand what it is. They don't even know what the initial is. If you give, if you spell it out for them, they'll say, uh, oh, uh, gee, that's not my job. My job is something else. That, that's somebody else's job. Or occasionally you'll find somebody say, oh, I know what that is. That's the Orange Book. Well, the Orange Book certainly was part of that, that whole thing, but it's certainly a lot more than just the Orange Book. It's, it's the fact that there's really a, a really large amount of ignorance about what the problem is. And I think, again, it's part of this dissipation of, oh, resources? Did I say it all? I did. Uh, this dissipation of resources that I mentioned before. People stopped being interested when the, when the, uh, when the uh, NSA said that they were going to solve the problem with cryptography, and all those people went somewhere. And if the people who knew about MLS got into other things, and, and now they're scattered around, you can't find them. Find them. Uh, what are some of the other reasons why we're not, uh, things aren't really great? If you look around at what's current in the marketplace, and what is current in the marketplace is a bunch of Intel machines uh, and operating systems, principally from Microsoft, some from Novell, a few from IBM, maybe some from DEC. And you'll find that uh, system and operating system protection, which is sort of a foundation and requirement for doing MLS and some of these other things, just aren't present. Uh, if they were present, I don't think we would find uh, the Unix, <coughs> Unix is a mistake in different ways. Uh, 
Uh, but it's, uh, the reason it is uh, a problem is it doesn't have any self-protection uh, capability. And the machines that they're on are no better at all. So as a consequence, we find that people who decide that they're going to attack machines uh, don't really have a great deal of struggle to do so. The machines are sort of indefensible. And that's not very good. But it is part of the problem that we're dealing with. This is getting one more serious, and that is trusted systems themselves, labeled processing trusted system availability virtually you nil. Know. There are some CMWs. Uh, Sun makes some CMWs. I think uh, Harris still has some in the market. Uh, I think DEC does, so they say there's three vendors of CMWs. And then there's the Wang XCS 300 and the Gemini machines, and that's it. There is no other, there are no other trusted systems around. One time, we would put up a list that might have had 10 or 12 systems. But there aren't. You can't go and buy them if you want one. You can go to Wang and get their XTF 300. You can go to Gemini, and I suspect you can get a machine from them. But it, then you've got them. I mean, there's just no other places to go. Neither of those machines comes with anything except the bare thing. You can put stuff on top of it. But the bulk of those machines are their, their platforms to build systems on. They're not fully complete systems on them by themselves. You could just plug them down in an office and say, Plug it in, hook your, your, uh, your uh, monitor up and say, well, I've got an office system. Nothing like that. You can build an office system on top of it with greater or lesser difficulty depending on which one you chose and how uh, ambitious you were, but you don't have an independent of So when we say we don't have any availability, we, first off, we're just going to have systems to build anything with. And then uh, the next problem is, is once, you, once you try to get those systems, what do you do with them? Well, going along with the fact that we don't have much in the way of systems, we also don't have much in the way of development teams to build applications on top of it. I said that the, we have a couple of systems that we could conceivably use, and now we go around and look and say, okay, who can help put us help us put up a, 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 a multi-level application one kind or another? Where do we get it? Well, there are still there are still companies, uh, SAIC and Boeing and, and, uh, and Hughes and people like that, uh, Lockheed Martin, places that, that have groups that are doing systems integration, systems development work. They're, they're still in the game, uh, but again, they don't have much experience with MLS because it hasn't been required very much. Uh, the companies that used to be, maybe the uh, eight or 10 of them 10 years ago, that you could have gone to and say, I want somebody to help me build a uh, multi-level system for doing X, uh, are down to two. You can go to Trusted Information Systems in Maryland, and they're, they're doing pretty well, they're still fairly large, and they have a lot of people together, so that they're critical mass is sufficient or Or you can go to Arca Systems, which is in, uh, here in California and also in, in Maryland. Everybody's in Maryland because they're near the government and that's where the market is been. Uh, aside from that, there aren't, there really are maybe one or two others. I'm probably spiking somebody that you know, and if I do, I apologize. But, but they're, if they're there, they're a small blip on the, on the screen. There just isn't lots of, lots of people in there. And again, it's part of the anticipation. There was no market, so people went off and did other things like feed their families or themselves. Um, so that's a, that is, that's a problem for us. And we don't have the systems, and we don't have the people to build the systems for us. Well, we don't really have to worry about all that because R&D is going to solve our problems for us, aren't they? Isn't it? We hope. Well, we, it might, except that all the R&D that we've been able to find, and I say we, there's several of us have been poking around the past years, so I've seen, is anybody doing anything anywhere that is going to help us solve our problem? And the R&D that they're dealing with all proceeds as though the MLS problem has been solved. And you get all kinds of people who talk to you about the fanciest intrusion protection system. It would be nice to have as an adjunct to a system that already did solve the mother level problem. But, with, but in lieu of the mother level problem, it's no solution. Or they'll say somebody, I've got an audit trail reduction program that will, will tell you the time of day that everybody was on and, and how they were feeling that day and whether they had any murderous thoughts or that sort of thing, just by analyzing the, the, the stream of data that the, the system talks about what they did. Neat stuff, uh, what's wrong with it is most of the audit systems, and in fact most of the intrusion reduction systems, rely on software that if I'm attacking the machine, allow me to replace that 
as, a, as part of my attack. Okay, I come in and I say, all right, uh, first thing I do is I, t I, I tell the audit system package to say, everything's fine. I'm seeing you blind, but I'm telling you you're fine. And you never know that I've done it until you go to, you know, when you, when you find the husk there of the machine with nothing left in it because I've taken it, and, and I have not done any fair. I've attacked, as part of my attack, the, the, uh, the alarm system. The alarm system is on the system that's being uh, protected. I can take the alarm out as part of taking the system out, and now the system is fine. I just tell you that everything's great. And people say, well, you know, I can do, I can, I can monitor what's going on in the network, I can monitor this. You can do all that, but you still can't, in most cases, detect the attacks. Somebody wants to take you, they're going to get you. And all of these are in lieu of having a strong foundation to resist attack. Okay. Now, if I have a strong foundation, in some ways, I don't care if you try, you're not going to succeed. You're not going to get me because I'm not going to have a, a send mail package, for instance, that allows me then all of a sudden to be moved. Eat all day long, but you're not going to be rude. And that is the difference between having a strong MLS system and one that has been ready and willing to take. And, and that's, that's the So the R&D program, while, while interesting and would be a really interesting R&D program if we'd solve the fundamental problems, is really proceeding on a, on a, on a, itself on a foundation state. It's solving problems that are nice to have, but not fundamental. And the fundamental problem is getting ignored. Okay, where are we now? Imposed solutions. This is another favorite thing. Uh, for a while, as part of this, this uh, business that we're going to, we're here to solve your problem. Uh, this cryptography was also an effort uh, at, uh, sponsored by NSA. For example, it's a T-Mont business, trusted models. If golly, if we get that, we're going to solve all the, all the computer security problems in the world. Uh, Trust Information Systems, who is a company that has been working on Tumont for almost 10 years now, I would say, which tells you something, I'm not sure what, just abandoned the Tumont effort. It's, they're, they're no longer working on it, it's no longer available for sale, they're not saying that you can do anything with it, and in fact saying, I'm not sure what they're saying, they're saying either it's too hard to do, or it wasn't that hard to do, but they couldn't get anybody interested in buying it from them, which is the same, same bad thing. So you can't even get that. But that was an imposed solution. That was going to be the answer because I, I, we've, uh, we've talked to people and say, well, gee, you guys ought to be considering some other options. I don't know, Tmont's going to take care of it. If that doesn't, you've got this backup this. And, and none of that is real. Not a bit of it turns out to be real. And so now we're in a situation where the MLS problem still isn't solved. The, the efforts that had been underway to solve it in some sense have been abandoned by their, uh, by their both, both the sponsor and the, and the, the people who were promoting it. And we, we're no better off than we were before. Uh, some of the other stuff, uh, yeah. The, the reason why it doesn't work, in part, is that users want arbitrary kinds of workstations. They want to be able to use what they use at home. If you're using, uh, if you're playing games at home with your kids, you want to be able to have the same games at work. I don't know games are not a good example. If you're using a spreadsheet at home to do your finances, you should be able to do the same one at work or vice versa. And, and what's happened to it is that the the marketplace, so everything we're doing, is so uh, so volatile that you, you see a hot thing on the uh, like World Wide Web kid go, huh, you can say, I can do that at home, why can't I do that at work? Well, that's a good question, why can't you do that at work? Part of the reason not to is that you can't deal with it because you don't have the security foundation to work with what's the problem. Um, so the same functionality as home systems is a, a big reality and uh, I'd say it doesn't really get them in the battlefield or on chips and things, but I bet you nickel a lot of stuff that you have on chips and or in the battlefield are derived in principle from the thing you have. Okay. Another sad statement about life is that none of the research that we can find will provide a general MLS capability in the next five to ten years. I'm stretching over ten years. It's possible somebody could start today and produce something in the next five to eight years that would in fact impact the problem. The problem is, what do we do between now and then? We have nothing in the pipeline. There is no, there is no inventory. There is nothing we can do. So we've got a, we've got a gap of, I say 10 years, you want to say eight years, you want to say five years, I'm not going to fight with you about that. But we have a gap. We have a gap that is not filled with anything. There's nothing being done that's going to solve the problem. And yet, I listen to the military people saying, and 
the battlefield, they want to have certain capabilities that, that cry for the ability to do multi-level systems. Certainly all of the staff positions in the, in the Pentagon and the support groups, uh, the agencies that do intelligence, uh, the people who, who try to do command and control, all of that cries for multi-level solutions, one form or another, and nothing's happened. I know we're building guards. That's what we know how to do. We've been building guards for 15 years. Why did it, why is it all of a sudden the, the, the solution of choice in 1990s? I mean, we would hope we would have progressed beyond not in the least. Um, there's one university program, uh, the MISI program announced there's no MLS to be delivered. That's interesting, that's, this is in the past month. No type one SCI level algorithms. You cannot, you're not going to get in MISI something that will let you do type one TSSCI in your Cortez project. That Cortez is, there's, there's other Cortez that's being done, but that one for MISI is not being done. Uh, the DISA programs, uh, MLS programs, producing guards. Three human in the loop and one automated one. And they're also doing the SYNCPAC system, or at least supporting it, which is, a, which is truth is not just a guard, and it's something that's close. But it's a specialized MLS. But that's okay. That, that is good. That's not bad. That's sort of ambitious. But it's not generalizable. I can't take that and now support 50 other things. It's so focused on that one application. That's all it's good for. Um, Okay, so we've got a lot of problems and so forth. What are we going to do about it? What can we do about it? Uh, we've, we've documented, there's documented needs. People want this stuff. Uh, there, there's, there's all kinds of reasons for doing it. What should we do? Well, we can stand around and wait for things to happen. If we do that, we'll be here in the next 50 years. Nothing will happen. Hopefully, we're going to need it. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Do this. This is stuff that you guys all know. Everybody understands what the foundations of the uh, of uh, MLS are, don't you? I don't have to show you, right? System of security based on labels. Access classes, uh, you know, labels for that. Each user is uniquely identified. Every user has an access class associated with him or her. Every piece of data has the same thing. So the terminals, you define a session level based on what the users and terminals access classes are. And that determines what you can read and write, basically. Okay. Uh, you can read stuff below that, but you can only write at that level. Mm -hmm. What else do we have here? I'm only doing this real quick on the assumption that you all know it anyway, but just as a reminder. These are things in the orange book, uh, in some sense. All references to data objects are allowed or denied based on the security access class of the, of the data piece. Um, it's a key idea. It's, uh, it's formalisms that go with it that are, that are pretty powerful, so it's not, it's not just a made-up engineering kind of thing, but it's actually got some mathematical foundation to it. Uh, movement of data objects from one session to another proceeds on the basis that you can write to somebody of the same or higher level classification. That's, that's it. No write-downs. You can't. You can't. Okay. And you can build an operating system then that, that provides and enforce, enforces all those rules. Uh, part of this, new data objects are created by uh, giving the security level of the session or process in which they're created. Um, system of security must always be invoked. There is no exceptions. There is nothing, it's not something you do on the occasion, it's something you do all the time for everything. That's, that's key. System is totally self-protecting. Hard, but, but it's a requirement. And then finally, it has to be small enough that we understand it. That's getting harder and harder these days where the operating systems are several millions of bytes long, instructions long, and the security pieces are scattered all over. That's one of the reasons the Orange Book, for example, talked about how to build the operating system, how to structure the operating system, and so you can put your mind around it. The Orange Book was, everybody faults the Orange Book because it says, well, it tells us how to build, how to build the operating system. And it does for a reason. If you can't put your mind around the operating system, you have no chance in hell of ever understanding it sufficiently to determine whether it's any of the properties that you want to do. So you say, okay, depending on how much, uh, how much assurance you want, how much, how important this is to you, we give you some gradations of how far you have to go in structuring the operating system so it can be understood. They start off with CMWs, they say, you can stick labels on any old COTS thing, just about, and you have a CMW or you have a B1 level system. 
It doesn't have very much assurance because you, you're making no claim. Security, whatever there is, is scattered all over. It has to have functionally that you, you have labels. You have to functionally be able to assure yourself that it uh, erases storage after you use it. A few simple one of things and identify users and that sort of thing. But you, know, you, could almost, you could almost craft one in your backyard and be sufficiently, sufficiently good at it to get a big one level uh, kind of rating. And it turns out that the bureaucracy has made that a higher uh, price item than it should, but, it, but it's, it's basically not trying to do too much. The next level is you say, well, we're going to try and we're going to try and keep everything together, but occasionally stuff you know won't won't fit, can't get it all designed in. But we'll we'll do a, a good faith rearrangement of stuff. We're not going to change a lot. We're going to rearrange material to try and get it to fit. So if, if I do all that well, I can understand it better. All the security stuff is here. Everything else we don't care about mostly except two or three, five places down here. And that's good enough for B2 rating. It's good enough to say you can, you can do some very, very good things with it, but still not, still it's got some shakiness to it. And it's not until you get to the point where you design from the beginning, from scratch, throw everything away and start over to the B3 and in one levels that you get to structuring the system sufficiently so that you can know that you can understand it almost from the bottom up, every little bit of it. Now that gets to be very expensive, and you don't want to do that for everything. But you would like to have somebody do it once in a while. And in fact, you might like to buy one, even if you have to pay extra for it, because it gives you the additional assurance to do really important things and maybe have in one box top secret, really important stuff and unclassified connections to the cycle pumps and not worry about it. Now, I'm not sure I'd go that far, but I mean, that's, that's the sort of target you're going after. You want to be able to do really radical things. And if you can't do radical, you can't do radical things unless you have the assurance of the operating system. So anyway, uh, it's, it's what I tell you. Some new requirements. And these requirements, I think, are very important because what they do, I'll get right here. Uh, what they do is they're, they're different from everything else we've done. The other requirements we've had were logically based, logical requirements built up uh, uh, based on the uh, ability to, to designate Check the data, how I, how I differentiate one piece of data from another with labels and so forth. There is, in fact, a requirement that was ignored in a lot of the things in the early days, especially, and that is what I'm calling user requirements. And these are, these are facts. Unless, unless the system supports the use of virtually any concept, the workstation, it is not going to be used. I can give you the best system where I can get people to even look at systems unless they can say, show me, show me how it does. Show me how it does Word. Show me how it does Excel. Show me how it does, uh, I don't know, pick, a, pick another application that you like. Now, if it doesn't do those things, or if I can't run them, because that's what I'm doing now, and have it in my list, I'm not, I'm not interested. It's too hard. Now, it's not too hard. It's just too much bother for me. And you say, well, you have to do it. No, I don't. I, I don't. I haven't, I haven't got it now. I don't have to do it tomorrow. You can, if you don't have that stuff, you're not going to get the other thing. And that attitude is absolutely ingrained. You just can't get away with it. It has to support any of the operating systems. I mean, I, I said that twice now. I'm not going to use the workstation. Maybe I should just say that all the time. And the other aspect of it that is new compared to everything else, the Orange Book and all the work we've done, except for the, the Red Book, mostly ignore network applications. The Red Book is an attempt to uh, put down, I think, a very High level technical understanding. You can build your networks from scratch. These are the things you want to put in. Uh, but we, we have not, by and large, attempted to address networks in, the, in our trusted uh, machine development. But these, these things have to support present network and foreseeable network things. What do I mean by that? It has to support World Wide Web. World Wide Web is never considered when we did the Red Book. I don't even sure the Red Book would we know what to do with how to deal with World Wide Web. Uh, so we, we find all kinds of things being tacked on to, like SSL, to allow us to do secure web connections or secure uh, internet connections, are being ad hoc developed to fill in gaps because we never had the way to do it. But this is what the, the, the systems have to do. People are networked. When I say people are networking, I mean literally. There, it used to be uh, everything was sort of all tucked around in mainframes. They have mainframes, some people use their mainframes. Then they put in LANs, and then somebody discovered, by golly, I can hook the LANs together. And they've done that in-house. And then somebody, then, then the, web, the web and all the other uh, internet revolution occurred and said, well, hey, I can not only hook my stuff together in-house, but I can connect to the agency across the river or across the street or, or up the road or something of that sort. And all of a sudden, 
in, in literally in about four years, the uh, defense-related agencies are now internet work in a way that they said they'd never do in a million years, and they just do it. Why? Well, it was easily done. Two is that there was this pressure to do things like we were doing at home, and that's you can't overemphasize that. They, you, you have no idea. The number of times you say to somebody, "I did that at home. Why can't I do it in my office?" And they're going around and beating up on the, admin, on the system administrator, saying, "You got to give me this capability." And so, you know, the easiest thing to do is give in. You're, you're not going to stand against the tide of 100 users saying they want to have this uh, this silliness, and, and uh, you're one person trying to keep it all straight, and nobody's backing you up, so you, you're going to give in. Um, anyway, it's it's it is a requirement that whatever we do in this area of multi-level security, we have to be aware of and address this problem. We can no longer just say, well, everybody's going to learn Unix. Well, maybe they are, maybe they're not. But we can't go along assuming that all the solutions are, uh, are going to be dictatable in any form. OK, what do we do about it? Well, here's something that we've been trying to get people to try out. We think we understand how to do it. I'm not going to bore you with all the details that uh, a number of us have been talking about in the past couple of days. But label processing land with viscous workstations is Ten year old idea. Very low risk. I mean, when I say low risk, I mean, if we, we have a trusted system, we have almost 100% certain of getting it right without any showstoppers, no glitches. You don't have to invent any new technology. You don't have to invent any new science. You don't have to invent anything. You just have to do it. Uh, high payoff? No ticket. Nobody wants it. Why? Well, we can give you the reasons. Not innovative. What does that mean? God almighty. What, what does it mean in the face of people wanting to do all these things? I can support the needs of the, uh, the agencies wanting to do their connections. I can provide capabilities so that you can do true one-terminal connections to things and support that in a way that makes sense. And that's not in there. It doesn't have the buzzword of the week. And, yet, and we've, we've heard this. We've, we've taken the idea from the time we've invented it and had it rejected in four different agencies, some of them twice, uh, in order, and, and it's, and it's if I, if I tell anybody about this, they say, yeah, it makes sense. We can do that. And yet you talk to the people who are buying this stuff, and they're not interested. Now, maybe they know something we don't. And we're not being stupid, I don't think. We are being persistent. And, and I think the, the idea is that it's something we could do. And it, it would get us started. Now, it doesn't solve the other problems, like, you know, what are we going to do in this eight, how are we going to fill in that eight-year gap? But we can do something. We can get us started. There's something else I think we ought to do. I think we ought to <coughs> initiate an aggressive project to make NT a B2H processing system. I think it's, it could be done. I think it would be expensive. Uh, I think it is not popular in the minds of a lot of people for a couple of reasons. One is they like the NT part, but they don't like the idea that we might be supporting Microsoft. And God forbid that we should be favoring somebody. Now, NT everybody's using to build servers of various kinds, and building networks with it, they're doing all this. It is the tool of choice today in just about any place you go in the government, primarily, uh, but also outside of the government. My son works at Crystal Myers Squibb uh, Research Labs in, in Princeton, New Jersey. Guess what they're using to build all their stuff with uh, and, and you go to just about anybody. It is, in fact, a, a pervasive technology that everyone's using. OK, why can't we do this? Well, there's no reason why we can't. Except, uh, you can't work with you got to change it. They won't do it themselves. They are not, and we've been to uh, Microsoft several times, why won't they add labels in? Why won't they add out there? The answer to that one is, is a scary and simple one. The entire U.S. government market for Microsoft is $100 million a year. A $10 billion a year business. We're round off there. We're not even, we're not even, we don't, we don't even show up the radar stuff. Now, $100 million to me, big bucks, I want you to know. Anybody with that? Chump change. Not interested. Not interested enough to, it doesn't interest them enough to have them devote any energy to trying to address this problem. Because it would, it would affect a lot of stuff they're doing. And they just don't see it. Right? Their market has to be acquired, and we're the only ones who do it. So, what can we do? Um, one of the possibilities that they do, in fact, support, Microsoft in particular supports, and they're part of their strategy was. They are both willing and interested in having third-party developers use their product, their IT systems and stuff, as a foundation for the product. So they might be able to support, they might be quite willing to let a third-party person develop something that is a 
variant on their MT that would track theirs as much as possible and they'd give us some kind of uh, control, label processing control, some assurance. We can rearrange stuff a little bit. Can't change a lot of stuff. Uh, moderate to high risk, I, I agree with that. I think it is moderate to high risk. The precedent, interestingly enough, was mumps was changed in, in a manner of some of this. And mumps was better structured and it had a lot more to it. But years ago, it was decided that we needed an example of a, of a high level level transistor. And Molex already had most of stuff. So there was a project that was done, sponsored by the Air Force, that allowed, that had MIT rearrange the components of Molex. They changed a little bit. Mostly rearranging stuff, moving things out of ring zero and putting it out into the outer rings, doing a whole variety of things of that nature. All of that contributed to a Molex that became a V2 Molex. It was, it was fairly good. Useful. Guess what? 25 years ago. Still being in use today at NSA. Somebody said uh, GM or somebody, one of the auto, auto manufacturers are still using one. They're the only two left, I think, in the country. But the thing that was interesting is we had done it once before, so we don't, you know, it's not a brand new idea, and it's something we certainly can consider. Um, if we focus on server functions and operations, that's what, to get started, we might be able to pull it off. If we try to make it everything to everyone, I don't think it'll work. But this, to do the servers makes sense. And in fact, the more I think about it, I think it makes a lot of sense, not just because We've been trying to get somebody to, to think of that idea. But in, in economic and a lot of other reasons, I can amortize the cost of a, a machine, uh, a high assurance machine for a server over a, a much longer lifetime. It, servers don't seem to be going undergoing this change every 18 months hardware, change every year the operating system, change every six months the application. Servers tend to be relatively stable, relatively to the operative work. Therefore, if I put a file server, which doesn't change, Maybe I'm dreaming and maybe it's wishful thinking. I can put it and amortize it over a very long period of time. So it's maybe worth the effort to try and put that energy into the system. At least that's my theory. Uh, label processing I demands work. One might want to uh, look into the possibility of uh, uh, solving the deficit in uh, multi-level systems by buying them. That's a novel idea. We haven't done that yet. We've asked vendors to make systems for us and hope that they would hope that they would uh, uh, buy them after we, we asked them to do it, but nobody ever has. That's why the market's going away. Uh, and, but, it, but, but supposing we just say, okay, well, here's the specs. We want this system to do these things. We we'll give you a, a specification. It includes as part of the specification your demonstration to us that it needs to make it up to be three uh, assurance levels out of the orange group. Or it needs to be two assurance levels out of the orange group. As part of your delivery, you give me the machine and those assurances, okay? And I'll pay you. If you don't give me the assurances, I won't pay you. I'll pay your costs, the materials costs for your hardware. But that, that's all. I think we haven't done that. We just haven't tried it. And I think it's something we could do that would make a, uh, make a great deal of uh, impact. It's at least something we try. And as a way of beating this problem is that we don't have any answers, uh, it's a way of producing an answer. I only have a few more if you guys can be patient. I will be too. Uh, something that's occurred to me is why don't we have trusted system APIs? I can get APIs for crypto, I can get APIs for just about everything I do with the computer. Why don't I have APIs for trusted systems? One of the things an API might give me, if I write down in very detail with it, is it might give me interoperability. I have systems today. If I try to interoperate the CMW, it doesn't work. CMWs don't talk the same language, but they're all done. Each with a separate little twist that makes it unique to that particular vendor. That's not what we need. We need something that's the same. No matter you know, if I buy it from North Hacker or whether I buy it from Harris or if I buy it from IBM, it has to work the same for the kinds of operations that the government's trying to do. We're networking together and we're talking to each other more. And I'm not part of government, but, but it's happening. I mean, these people are just doing all this, and if we don't interoperate, it's, it's going to go ahead. So as a way of maybe providing interoperability, if we have a trusted system uh, API, we might be able to, be able to get there. Uh, and it would release customers from the tyranny of each vendor having a unique piece of it. That's killing us. And it's killing us mostly in the, in the area of MLS trusted systems uh, because, uh, because we can't, we can't interrupt. We can't, we can't buy, get the best buy or use the, 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 the best vendor because uh, if I do that, it won't work for the other stuff I have. So it's, a, it's an idea that hasn't been tried. I think it's one that we, we could do. I think it's not easy. I think it would be a research project of some magnitude. 
uh, and yet it's, uh, it's one that we should do. Uh, integrated cryptography. Uh, this is, turns out we're going to meet that goal of anywhere, anytime, anything, anybody. We have to figure a way to make cryptography, uh, it already is cold. The NSA did an incredibly brave, foolish maybe, not quite. They did a brave thing when they introduced Fortet as a, as a pluggable piece of crypto inside, callable by, callable by programmers. It's the first time that it's been done. I mean, there used to be algorithms that you could get from NSA if you had an embedded application, you could, get, you, could, you could do software or crypto. But this is more important. This says that I, crypto is now just another program. It's another drive, it's something else I can do anything, and I can call, I can read and write to it the way I did just with this, and things like that. That has never been done before. Now it gives me the ability to have crypto that I can call, and if I want to do a, if I want to, if I want to establish a session uh, uh, on some sort on the link, I can do crypto on the link, I can do crypto at the session level, I can do crypto to support uh, SSL and, uh, and, and the web uh, kinds of applications. All of this stuff because I suddenly have high grade, high powerful equipment crypto that I can just whip out and call by, by, by program. That's useful stuff. But we need to do more, uh, more than, uh, than we have in that regard. And, and whatever kind of systems we're building has to make provision for this integrated crypto. If we don't, we're not going to meet our requirements in the networking area because it's an important part of the network solution. Uh, we're not going to be building black boxes on this thing anymore. I think we're going to be building more things with just PCMCIA. Uh, what else do we want to do? Capsulation methods, these are, these are sort of, for MLS, uh, I'm not going to bore you with that. Happens to be a pet hobby horse of mine. Uh, okay, what could we expect? This you might be. Within a year. First of all, within a year, I'd expect somebody to be able to independently determine whether this strategy will work. This is my version. I haven't coordinated it with anybody. Nobody has voted and said, gee, that's a good idea, Jim. These are, these are my ideas. Now, the first thing I would do is I'd make somebody and we say, okay, sit down and, and really criticize it and do a good job. Just, just do it. Um, within a year, we should also have completed all the designs for model level processing so that we won't be quite APIs, but the specs should be done in a way that we can go and really go at it if we want. Within two and a half years, pull up demonstration system that allows us to do model level access to files and, and communications subsystem. For example, model level missing or something of that sort. So Message traffic in and out. And the beginnings of the um, uh, application of crypto, integrated crypto, things like the inter internet uh, protocols. And the, the, it may be that that will happen faster than, than I anticipated, to, but, it, but I'm, I'm, not that, I'm not that certain of whether it will or not. So I'm allowing, say, two and a half, maybe three years from now. Um, within five years, Several different models of using MLS in the workplace. And that, uh, everything from an office environment, uh, certainly, uh, I've been talking to Cynthia enough now in the past couple of years, I could see an MLS on a ship, capital ship uh, environment. Um, I could certainly see more than one model, one we propose. There are other ways you could do this. You could use VMs, for instance. We're not proposing to do that today, but if we had a mobile level VM, which deck had one time, we could certainly consider doing the job that way and possibly making the end. And uh, getting some experience with this, finding out where it doesn't work. I, I don't expect perfection in this. We, we haven't tried any of these things. And therefore, I'm expecting some of it's going to break and you're going to have to do something better. But we'll have some experience to base the, any changes we want. And more importantly, we have a basis for going forward. Finally, I never thought I'd get here. My gosh, I thought about time. Uh, Summary is that there are needs that only multi-level systems can solve. There are no alternatives to some of these, these problems except MLS. The other thing is MLS is not well. It's, it's, it's pretty damn sick. Uh, nothing's happening. Nobody's doing anything. Uh, everybody's wandering around in the desert hoping that something will happen. Maybe it's some kind of a, uh, I don't know, miracle of one kind or another. Action along the lines now, I indicate. But I, any action. I'm willing if somebody says, gee, we're not going to do that, Jim, that's too, too, too much. What you want to do, I want to do this. Fine. Do something. Don't stand around waiting for it to happen. And I don't think we can do that. And finally, I think the important thing is the goals can be achieved. These are not impossible goals. We're not asking for the suspension of the law of gravity. 
We're not asking for uh, the world to stop this afternoon for an hour and a half while everybody gets a chance to rearrange these things. Yeah. We're talking about realistic things that can happen if somebody has a will to vote. I appreciate your letting me talk and rant at you for this past hour. It's been very nice. And thank you all for the very warm welcome I've had here for, at the school. Thank you all. Thank you very much again. I appreciate your 